Well, thank you so much for taking the time to join us today for our joint webinar on labor shortages solved, where we have Deb and Miranda who will be joining you to talk about strategies to not just find and attract, but also retain the right talent for your business. I hope everyone's had a happy family day. Um, I see the Uyghurs mug there, Deb. I'm wearing my Uyghurs socks today. If I was a little bit more flexible, Ooh, I would probably I have to, but you have to trust me on that one. Um, so we're super <laughs> excited about giving you this presentation today. Um, just a little bit of housekeeping, and I feel like a broken record, but we do have the Q&A feature that is available for everyone. So please get those questions through and we'll weave them into the presentation. And at the end, um, if we have some time, we'll talk about any other questions that come up throughout. But just to kick the, 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 the ball off, let's talk about um, one of the shared missions on why we came together today to talk about how we can obtain and retain talent. And so um, one of the big things that uh, Uyghurs spoke to us about was there's a HR reporter survey that talks about 42% of workers have already started looking for a new job in 2024. This is up from July 2023. So employers need to be able to competitively attract skilled talent um, with competitive offerings. So that's a huge piece. Over 50% of employers are actively seeking talent for new roles, mostly to support the company growth, um, but also organizations that are primed to move ahead with strategic initiatives as well. On the flip side as well from Immigrate, we see that this is the biggest problem facing employers and it's not going away. The labor shortage, whether it be stemmed for your business from COVID uh, or the low birth rate in Canada or the baby boomers or succession plans, um, finding, obtaining, attracting and retaining the right talent is a huge issue. And we're here to give you tips and tricks and tactical advice on how you might be able to overcome uh, any labor shortages that you have in your business. So. Thanks again for taking the time to meet with us. I want to introduce from the immigrate side of things um, myself first. Uh, my name is Michael. I've uh, immigrated here from Australia, uh, brought my family over. I'm here to really talk about uh, some of the revenue impacts of not having the right, the right labor for your business and how we can help you with that. But I've also got Miranda here, who's our head of marketing. Welcome, Miranda. Miranda is here to really talk to you about how Businesses are often doing things differently, more strategically, specifically when it comes to immigration tactics. At Immigrate here, we pride ourselves on the mission of successful outcomes. To make immigration simple for you, we have an amazing success rate when it comes to labor market impact assessments. And we wanna make sure that we combine not just the technical support of our amazing platform, but also making sure we provide the right advice, not just any advice, when it comes to your immigration needs. So with that, um, Miranda, I might throw across to you just to set the scene on some of these macro issues that are happening in Canada at the moment, which are really stemming um, some of the problems that some of our viewers might be experiencing when it comes to labor shortages. Yeah, first off, really excited to be here and so excited to have Deb as well. She's gonna be sharing some amazing stuff coming up here, but first I just wanna set the stage with kind of what's the, the problem we're working with here. So if you're a business owner or an HR manager or um, you know, just someone who's in business and feeling the crunch of not having the staff you need, you're really not alone. So we're seeing 76% of small business owners working extra hours to compensate for their labor shortages. Um, now, of course, the problem is if you're not alone, that means everybody else is looking for that talent too. They're also looking to hire the same people. So this is a really big challenge. Um, we see 64% of Canadian businesses saying that labor shortage is actually limiting their growth. So think about 64% of businesses in Canada having this challenge and what the impact of that is on the Canadian economy. So it goes beyond just your business, um, the businesses in this session here. Um, it's a really big problem nationwide. Um, now, if we wanna sit back and say, you know, cross fingers, I hope this goes away. I hope this problem fixes it itself. We're kind of kidding ourselves because um, the cause of this problem is, you know, things like the demographic shifts. You mentioned before um, the baby boomers retiring. We've got 19% um, of the population over 65 in 2022. Um, and of course, a big chunk of the population also nearing retirement. 
And we have fewer um, young Canadians entering the workforce in Canada. That's just due to demographic shifts. And so we need to be creative when we're looking at how are we bringing in more talent? How are we retaining that talent and keeping good talent within our businesses? Now I've got on the slide here, 40 hours is the stat, how long it takes an immigration application if you're doing it as a business without help. But outside of just the immigration application side of things, um, if you're looking at retaining your talent, um, if you're looking at having turnover, that's a very, very costly problem. The amount of time it takes to hire a new team member, the amount of additional costs that can take is huge. And when you have a labor shortage, it's impacting the staff you have right now. They're stressed they're more likely to turn over. So just to set the stage for the problem there, um, we need to really be thinking about creative solutions here and what we can do for your business to thrive. Now, when we're looking at the retention side of things, of course, benefits being a huge part of that, of course, finding what you can do for your employees to help them stay with you is huge. So I'm really excited to pass off to Deb. I'm gonna let Deb introduce herself and what her team has cooking over there at Uyghurs. Um, and then she's gonna be sharing a bit with you. Thanks, Miranda, and thank you, Michael. This is an amazing opportunity, and there's for so many reasons why we're doing this presentation together, because at the end of the day, we have a very common goal, and that's to help our clients. And so uh, in our discussions previous to this webinar, we, we realized that there's a lot of common ground that we're covering. My name is Deb Wiegers. I'm the principal on the benefits department for Wiegers Financial and Benefits, and proud to say that uh, we're one of Saskatchewan's largest uh, financial and retirement and financial planning, uh, group benefits, and group retirement program services uh, offers in uh, Saskatchewan. Have about 35 employees, uh, growing uh, a lot. Um, certainly understand some of the challenges when it comes to finding that great talent out there. And uh, proud to say that we work with over 625 clients, working in every industry that you can imagine, from small to large, from manufacturing to hospitality. So we hear these conversations a lot, and we're just one cog in the wheel when it comes to really looking to find or to obtain that talent, to attract that talent, and to keep that talent. So why are we here today? One of the things that we talk about is uh, benefits and benefit strategy. And in some of the surveys that we're seeing out there, the Canadian Benefits Trend Survey, 84% of Canadian employers say that the competition for talent is their number one issue. And it is influencing their benefit strategy, what they're doing, how they're going about uh, managing their benefit portfolio. Interestingly enough, 70% of these younger Canadians that are coming into the workplace will often say they'll go somewhere else to find better benefits, improve benefits. And it's probably at this moment that we really want to interject the conversation on systemic rewards. And that's really a changeover from what we're used to saying we're talking about total rewards and compensation. And we will also see that along with just compensation, pay, salary, there's a whole other gamut of, of things that these employees are looking for. And one of them plays very much into the mental health space. So 63% of those surveyed will say that they're being impacted by mental health or mental well-being issues. And it's also very important to note that 48% of those surveyed um, are looking at inclusion, they're looking at diversity, they're looking at the people coming into this space, and they're trying to figure out how that aligns with the benefit strategy. So you have to be looking at it on a much, much broader basis. So in our world, we, we talk a lot about having generous benefits, and it's not just our benefits, it's indirect and direct of that, and definitely putting a large, large emphasis on health and well-being as well. And flexibility and pay equity as long uh, as goes along with that solution as well. So we do want to spend a little bit of time in diversity, equity, inclusion, and and it's really just to talk about you know what is that actually? Um, we have to pay attention to it because we've got a very diverse workplace. It's not just about male and female. It's not just about younger and older. It's about diverse cultures and just ways in which people look and identify with their benefits in terms of what it means to them, how important it is then to them. So diversity obviously would focus on the differences that you have and equity would focus on the fairness of that. If you can recognize that this is an important place to be thinking about your benefit strategy, you're on your way to making sure that you're gonna have a good fit. If we move into the, the enhanced mental or sorry, customization and personalization. Um, this is huge. 
Um, again, if we're looking at a very diverse workplace, we also need to be thinking about what does benefits mean to them? A lot of times we'll encourage our clients to do uh, an overall employee engagement survey. You need to find out what these employees are looking for, what is important to them, their families as well. And when we're looking at immigrants coming over or foreign workers, they have very different needs. And so that's another part of that equation that we need to be thinking about uh, when we're looking at our benefit strategy. So you have to be looking at it from a cultural perspective. And another thing that comes into play is, again, looking at those mental health and wellness resources that will help these individuals when they come to the workplace and how they, how they get settled into their homes and their work uh, environment as well. So you're going to see things that will come into uh, conversations on the mental health side, uh, side of that. Uh, they'll look at employee assistance programs. They'll look at mental health apps, virtual he health care. Big deal today because now logistically it's just difficult to get to see somebody in person and it's a choice that some people are making as well. So the fact that you can implement virtual healthcare services into your programs will mean that it becomes much more inclusive of your employee base. It's quite um, staggering, uh, to know, staggering to know that 80% of employees feel that the employers offer inadequate mental health support. Because quite often when we interview the employer, they feel that they're doing a great job. If you interview the employee, they're feeling that there's more that can be done. And um, I think we need to align ourselves uh, much more and much quicker on that space. So what are those things that we can be looking at on a preventative level? Because it's not just enough um, to say, you know what, leave your things at home, come to work, work, and then go home and take care of your things. It doesn't work that way anywhere anymore. What we need to understand is that these employees, anything that happens outside the workplace impacts the workplace. And so what can we do to make sure that we're providing the tools and resources to be much more preventative? Um, because if you have a healthy employee, you're going to have an overall healthier bottom line. There's no question to that. The big staggering um, stat that we see is everybody knows how to measure their absenteeism. But can you have you measured your presenteeism? Presenteeism is 10 times that rate. So if you've got an absentee rate, rate that's already up towards 8, 10, 12 days a year, you take it and times it by 10. That tells you that those people are at work, but are they putting 100% into their day? So these are the things that we need to be thinking about. Exercise, if again, the stats will tell you, they want you to be providing some level of programming for their physical well-being. Healthier eating, weight reduction, stress management, absolutely. And again, that one pops up again, 28% mental health. And these all work together. There's always an issue if it's one stressor or one illness that they're dealing with, quite often it's going to come with two or three other situations. We can't ignore that it's in a silo. And financial well wellness supports. Um, big conversation today. What we're looking at is a lot of people, and again, we look at foreign workers that come over and they really don't know where to start. And there's a lot to, there's a lot to do when you get here and you have to get comfortable and you get yourself to work and you get your family to school, um, finances become incredibly important on all levels. Financial literacy has become our top stressor in mental health. So we just have to do the right thing as an employer and provide them the foundation in which they're going to be able to start and be able to be thinking about simple 101 things, debt management, budgeting, how to plan for retirement, how to plan for a day that it might be a death or a disability. These are important things. And if we ignore them, um, we're not going to be much better if something was to happen. So having that access to the financial education, uh, we do a lot of uh, work in this space. We do financial literacy videos and webinars. And we're finding that our clients are really enjoying this because it's a way in which they can share that um, education over to the employees. So three cheers for the benefits. Uh, I know that everybody thinks that benefits comes at a cost. It does not come at a cost. There's much more to it. Um, it's definitely something that's top of mind. So if interviewed by the employees, 72% uh, of those employees are going to appreciate their health benefit plan. And it wasn't just because of the, of, of the pandemic. It's always been there, but definitely post pandemic, there's much more emphasis on having a very competitive benefit strategy that aligns with your organization's strategy overall as well. 
Um, and again, I keep going back. It's a broken record, I know, but it seems to be the thing that's really top of mind. Um, we do need to understand that that mental health that is in the space of our day-to-day -day employees, they're being impacted by the ability to be able to focus, to have clarity. You're losing out because they're not there. They're not healthy. They're not productive. So there definitely is a partnership in that space as well. So for you, my tip is just to make sure that you take a closer look at your benefit strategy and you're looking at ways in which you can provide a very diverse um, and inclusive benefit offering to your employees uh, for the short and the long term. So we want to build resili resiliency for 2024. Amazing. Thank you so much, Deb. Um, so I love what you shared about, you know, the retention is really kind of the same sort of two, another side to the same coin of um, attracting the employees, right? And it's about what you provide for them and, and what you're able to give the employee. So we want to talk today a little bit too about um, kind of viewing, viewing this as a toolbox, right? What are all the tools you have? One of those things is benefits for retention. We're going to talk today about understanding how hiring foreign workers can be another um, strategy that you have in your toolbox to solve those labor shortages. Um, so I want to get into a little bit just kind of what what is the set the scene here? What is it looking like on a national and provincial level? So what's the state of immigration here? I wish that I had put this stat on the slide because it's a powerful one, but um, over the past 10 years, the number of jobs going vacant in Canada has gone from 2.6% to 4.3%. So near doubled the number of jobs that are going unfilled that are being offered by Canadian employers. So this is a really big problem that the government is seeing and addressing. Hopefully what we have seen from both federal and provincial governments is movement to help businesses to provide programs that will help them recruit internationally um, when local talent isn't available to them. So of course we want to prioritize the local talent, but we do understand that at times that's not possible. So what we're seeing in the immigration space is um, over 200,000 temporary foreign workers hired last year. Um, that number has simply gone up um, by leaps and bounds, honestly, from previous years. We saw approvals rise 68% in 2022 from the year previous, and that's something that we've seen continue. So the kind of driver behind that is increased provincial and federal programs, as well as approvals within existing programs. What that does mean is that the space is a bit more complicated. There are more options than ever. We were seeing extra options available in sectors that are particularly affected by labor shortages. So we're thinking about things like agriculture, hospitality, healthcare. These um, sectors have additional options available to them for hiring internationally. That said, for businesses, it can feel a bit complex to kind of weed through that and just find out what the right options are for them. That said, if you are lacking staff, if you are having trouble recruiting, or if you can't find the skills and experience you need within Canada, you do have options available to you. Um, fi finally on this slide, I do wanna just leave off here by stating too that what we've seen so far in 2024 is some moves from governments to um, protect from fraud. And that means that they're often requiring increased documentation from employers so that they can make sure everything is um, sort of up to code and following regulations. But that can mean that it can be a little more complex for an employer who's trying to hire. So I'm going to talk later about how you can get help if you're struggling with that, um, where you can go for advice. Um, because again, there are these programs that have been made available that are going to be really helpful to you if you take advantage of them. So with that, I want to pass it back to Michael. He's going to tell you a little bit about a case study and how this has worked for one of our clients. Yeah, and thanks so much, Miranda and Deb, for those valuable insights. You know, one of the questions that comes up too is, you know, why hire foreign workers? For a lot of our customers too, it may be the first time. And so when it comes to what's that pressing need, without having workers, you're not able to generate the revenue you need for your business. And, this case example that we've got from the McMurray Group, Will Brown, it's one of the largest a and franchises in Canada. And they were, they were significantly impacted by COVID. Um, so that was one of the, the, the triggers. And how would they get hundreds of workers to keep their 43 stores operating in those local communities 
without the help of immigration. And a couple of great touching points from Will's conversation and him working with us is, it is a blend of technology and expertise. Our job is to make it simple. And he was thinking about, well, for those hundreds of applications across 43 stores at 40 hours a pop, how is he gonna have time to do it? And a big piece around immigration is how can we keep it simple and save a lot of time? And I'm looking forward to Miranda sharing some, some tips on that. When it comes to the McMurray Group, we operated with a strategy as well. We operated with a strategy that included not just the obtaining talent, but also the retention, because when someone makes a commitment to come to Canada as a destination of choice, that's a commitment often with their whole family. And they want to come to Canada often to make it their forever home. So a huge opportunity to consider retention as part of the strategy. Outside of that, when it comes to keeping the business operating, in some cases, hospitality, hotels, they shut floors, uh, different serving hours, lunch times closed. Um, depending on what industry you're operating in, you've probably been through that pain of not having enough staff. The good news is where we were able to help Will, he had hundreds of applications processed, 100% success rate on his applications, and he was able to do it as a single HR manager. And that's one of the keys to time-saving techniques as well with the platform is you may have a HR team, you may not have a HR team at all, it may be just yourself. Um, who's responsible for finding the labor and making sure that they've got that retention plan. We're here to help you with it. And with that, I might throw back to Miranda because I know you've got some really good tips around time-saving techniques for those who are on the call. Yeah, for sure. So I know that some people here may have already hired uh, temporary foreign workers. Some people may not have experience with that. Um, now, I did have earlier in the slides a stat that uh, we found just based on feedback from our clients that when they do it themselves, it takes them about 40 hours to hire someone. Um, we take that time down to three hours, but um, we want to share some tips here to help you save some time too, because that's a huge time commitment. Um, I'm going to talk a bit about getting expert help on this slide. Before I get into that, I do want to just clarify that there are two sources of expertise you can get if you are hiring internationally. So first off, you can get help from a lawyer. Secondly, you can get help from a regulated Canadian immigration consultant or an RCIC. Um, pluses and minuses to both. We do find that typically working with an RCIC can be a bit more economical um, and also that's someone who's really specializing in the applications you need. So we're going to talk a bit about that. What I do want to point out as a time-saving tip here is um, first off you want to find an expert who specializes in the applications that you actually need. So not all help in the immigration space is the same. Um, there are thousands of different options within the immigration space, many different applications. So someone who's maybe an expertise, for example, in um, citizenship or, you know, working with refugees is not necessarily going to have the knowledge that you need. And that can even be someone who isn't in your province, may potentially not be as familiar with your provincial programs that are available to you. So um, you want to make sure that you check beforehand that your expert you're working with does work with the applications you need. And you also want to ask if they can help the workers that you are going to be bringing over. Um, having, having a worker who you've hired, you've got your applications covered, but they're struggling with their work permit, they're struggling to do it on their own, is going to cost you potentially a lot of time and be a big roadblock for you. So find someone who does specialize in those applications that um, specifically are for employers and particularly those in your province. So this is why we at Immigrate work with uh, RCICs from across Canada so that we can provide expertise in all of the applications potentially needed. So just be judici judicious in who you're selecting to get help from. Secondly, um, finding help that integrates all parts of the process. Now, the immigration process can feel overwhelming as an employer. Um, especially if you're unfamiliar with it. That's why we recommend finding help from somebody who's gonna help you, not only with your immigration applications, but also if they are able to provide the recruitment. Um, and so you're not working with a separate recruitment agency, a separate immigration uh, specialist, um, and potentially a third expert who's helping your worker with their applications. Try to find a solution that integrates all aspects of that, just to simplify your time. 
you really can get caught up in the emails and the back and forth when you're working with multiple professionals. So that's why, again, like here at Immigrate, we do everything from the recruitment to the applications to helping the worker um, at their arrival to the strategies for retaining. So just look for a holistic solution if you can. Thirdly, um, make sure you're leveraging technology wherever you can. The immigration space has changed just like everything else. Um, but when we're looking at a process that can be time intensive, if you're not leveraging the tools available to you, um, you're really missing out. So we're looking at AI that can help us now with things like translation services, which can be really, really helpful. AI can also be a really helpful place to start your research. If you even go to the chatbot on our website, you're going to be able to get help from a specific immigration um, trained AI. So make sure that you're using technology wherever you can. Um, and don't be going to old school services that are trying to do things by paper unnecessarily. You want to make sure that technology is really helping you out where possible. So, um, Michael, I'm going to pass off to you and I know you're going to talk a bit about how we use technology, but these are just things that you want to be on the lookout for when you are looking at doing this process of immigration. Please, 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 if you take one thing away from my perspective is ditch the email back and forth, ditch the paperwork. There's too much room for risk and error when it comes to such an important thing um, like your business and, and, and families, right? So uh, I've just got on here a couple of illustrations about how our technology does help um, save time. So the first one is around the job board screening and that's not just job board screening, we also have job board posting automation. So an opportunity here to you know, ditch some unnecessary extra recruitment subscriptions Having the visibility of where your workers, if we can find local first, they'll appear there as well as our global network. So that's one piece. In the middle slide, we've got just a visualization inside our platform and, and other um, applicant tracking systems do have that. They may not be immigration focused, but there's 60 data points that we've got which show you the end to end when it comes to your labor hire. Uh, often we have conversations about where is the application up to? Where is my worker up to? When is my workers work permit going to expire and there is a, a good question thanks for those who have been popping in the questions in the q a we have been weaving them in but there's a question specifically around bringing labor from abroad are they all closed contracts no they're not necessarily closed contracts but one of the key things too that we like to try and encourage is having an actual conversation um, from your business with one of our consultants to talk about the overarching strategy you can see on the third piece, we have things inside our platform for workers too, around EOI calculators is, is the acronym. Essentially what that does is it, it shows how many points they've got for different provincial or federal programs. And so then we can craft a strategy that's gonna look at long-term retention for your labor force. I mentioned earlier on that, you know, like myself coming to Canada, that's a big commitment to move 16,000 kilometers to pick up your family, get the boxes, you know, when you're making that commitment to an employer, you, you often are there to set your feet and, and be a part of the community. And what we find too with strategic immigration as well is finding a program that's a win-win for everyone, um, making sure that there's an opportunity in some cases to progress all the way to permanent residency as part of that strategy. Definitely talk to your immigration consultant about that long-term strategy there. But here's just a couple of visual examples about how technology can save your time. And just to come back to echo Miranda's point, if you're not leveraging technology of some form to help with the immigration process, you're missing out. Things change too fast. You want to have that end-to-end -end visibility. You don't want to have emails back and forth where you can lose touch with those really important factors, which is essentially keeping your business where your business needs to be. Um, I might throw back to Miranda here and um, and Deb. So Deb, you've got some resources that you've prepared um, that can help um, people take away from today's webinar. Do you want to talk a little bit about those resources that you've got? Absolutely, Michael. And and I'll add in even a couple of other things that we're finding that are quite useful for our clients is that um, one of the things that you know people are trying to understand is the timeline and what happens where and who does what when. And this has been quite, you know, a learning uh, process for, for I think both of us when we talk about, you know, your product line, our services, when do we start to come together and collaborate? And, you know, it's one thing we want to make really clear to the clients is that, you know, there's a stage where 
we're going to be relying on the expertise of immigrant because these are people that have yet to get their boots on the ground in Canada. And so that's where your expertise comes into play. When they land on Canadian soil, then is when our conversations will start. But it's not a one size fits all. And that's where it's really important to reach out to us because we're clearly seeing that there's many variances when it comes to bringing in foreign workers. So um, it's really best to understand the situation at hand with that, that client and then to understand where we can bring product line in. So if you had clients that were coming to Canada, um, what can we put in place for benefits as it relates to um, the health care um, services? to the benefit benefits that our clients are already receiving. So full-time permanent employees might have a certain set of benefits, but temporary uh, foreign workers might have a different set of benefits for now until that transition moves. So we're gonna be very keen on that timeline and we'll work through that with our clients as well. And when we get into these conversations, one of the things we want clients to remember is that we don't have the one size fits all benefit strategy because every company is different in terms of what you're going to be looking for on a short and long term basis. So we quite often will ask our clients to go through what's called a benefit strategy questionnaire. It's a very, very simple survey. It really helps you under, understand what are the things that are important to you and what are the things that your conversations with employees are important to them and how do we bring that together in something that's going to be uh, much much more valued to your end user being the employees and their families so that is something that we feel feels really important because your benefit strategy has to align with your organization overall strategy if the two don't then you're going to have conflict and you won't get to where you want um, and if you if anything not easily um, and then definitely doing employee engagement surveys you know, a lot of people say, well, I, I, I'm feeling I'm put myself in a box. No, you're not. You need to hear what they want, what they're looking for, what's important to them. So that when you're going through your strategy, now you can start looking at ways in which you're extending those benefits in a way that's meaningful to them as well. Yeah, so true. Um, so you're going to be receiving uh, that questionnaire that Deb mentioned um, by email after this. So make sure you go through that. Um, Secondly, from us, you're going to be receiving a free checklist for successful LMA applications. And of course, we're going to be sending out also a recording of this session so you can rewatch it, you can share it, um, but make sure you check out all those resources. If you want to go to the next slide there, Michael, we've got a couple more little gifts for you to take away here. Um, first off, uh, as it as Immigrate, we wanted to offer something special for all of the Uyghurs clients who have come here today and, and just kind of thank you guys for being here. So we've got an exclusive offer for everyone here to have a complimentary one hour immigration strategy session with one of our experts. So this is a really great opportunity for you to just ask any questions you might have, understand what the process would look like and start exploring, you know, what are the costs, what programs, how long might it take for my business? So even if you do want to do the process yourself of doing these applications, please take advantage of that and ask those questions that you might have. Um, it's a great opportunity to speak with an expert. Secondly, um, Uyghurs has set up uh, this concierge service where they're directing you to these resources to help cover those foreign workers when they arrive. So they've got a link there that's going to direct you specifically to their um, provider who can help you out with getting health coverage you may need when someone is landing here in Canada. So that's a really good opportunity to take advantage of as well. And you're gonna get those links by email. So I'll pass it off to Michael for Q&A. And we do have a couple of great questions that we didn't get woven in. So I might throw the first question, Deb. Um, this question's to you. We have a question around what aspects should we consider to ensure our benefits align well with the needs and preferences of our workers? Wow. That's a loaded one. Um, Thank you for that one. <laughs> it's a great question. <laughs> um, there's a lot that comes into play when you're talking about benefits and what you need to be providing for your employees. So again, I go back to that benefit strategy questionnaire. I think you really need to understand, you need to have a pulse on what's actually happening. And you don't necessarily, and you shouldn't necessarily compare it to everybody else that's out there because your needs and wants and your employees' needs and wants may be very different. It might be different just because of the industry that you're in. It might be different because of logistically, you're in rural areas versus urban areas. Your age groups are gonna be a lot younger. We talk a lot about customization and 
personalization, um, that's huge with the younger generations, the millennials and, and the Gen Zs, you know, spending in wellness accounts. Those are like amazing ways in which you can provide that level of flexibility. So you need to better understand your audience and what they're looking for. And then you also need to pull in the team. So when I say the team, I mean the stakeholders, uh, you know, HR managers have a very, very large focus and important focus on making sure they take care of those employees. But we also understand that there's others at the table. There's the, the CFO and the COO and the business owner. What's important to them? And how do you all come together and collaborate in something that's meaningful for everyone? Nice point. Um, next question I've got is around quality talent. So I'm going to throw this one to you, Miranda. Um, we know that about 95% of people who have the skills and experience to fill jobs just don't happen to be in Canada. So when it comes to safeguards to find quality talent, basically um, through the recruitment process, what are some of the tips and pieces of advice that have you got and how do we overcome those problems? Yeah, so um, here at Immigrate, we do have a recruitment team that is really uh, specialized in helping understand uh, what people's skills are. And this is something that's really important, especially when you're talking about um, interviewing cross-culturally, right? Just because someone expresses something differently than you might have doesn't mean that they don't have those skills. So having someone who can help you with that experience in cross-cultural interviewing can be really helpful. Um, a second thing I would say is just in your interview, don't feel that you have to um, rush. If you are not clear on what somebody's skills are, feel free to ask. Um, feel free to take the time to really understand that. Um, and documentation is really important too. So we do think about like the references, do not overlook your references, of course. Make sure they have documentation for the school and the work experience that they have. Um, and, and make sure that you feel really confident in that. Um, yeah, and, and in specific cases where there are skills testing, this is something that I know we've helped um, clients with before, is helping them arrange skills testing for workers who are in areas that have um, specific skills. We're talking things like welding and that kind of thing. Um, so yeah, hopefully that helps a little bit, but I'd say part of it is really taking your time, making sure you have the documentation and making sure that you feel confident that you have really explored what those person's skills are with them. Thank you for that. Um, I'm going to merge a couple of questions together and, and, and pass this one over to you, Deb. Um, we get, we've got a couple of questions around like contracts and commitments and uh, healthcare. Now to start off, one of the questions is about how do we treat temporary foreign workers versus normal employees? The answer I can help with that is it's, it's basically the same, right? So for example, when it comes to healthcare benefits, um, it is the employer's obligation to make sure that they're um, satisfying the needs of healthcare. But flipping across to the question for you, Deb, when it comes to employers who may have not been fast to the gate or have may, may have been reluctant or a little bit slow to get the ball rolling with an appropriate health and well-being strategy, what are some of the, the areas where you've seen um, people be re uh, reprehensive and, and what are some of the things that you've spoken about to help guide them to get the ball rolling and to get started as an expert in this field? Well, there's, there's a lot of ways in which you can offer benefits. So when I say benefits, I, I again, I don't just necessarily talk about what we offer in terms of health, dental, life insurance, disability. Those are huge components. Those are, you know, the big components of a benefit program. But I even think about our organization and the things that we bring to the table as a company to our employees. Um, I think the one thing that, you know, we've learned through this process is that um, when that employee does come to you and they are a temporary foreign worker, there is a, a, an ask that we have to put out to the marketplace. We have to ident identify um, a few facts, then we take it to the marketplace and we see what the offer back will be. Um, it may be that we can only extend a very small amount of benefit coverage, but that doesn't mean that the organization itself can't lend itself to having some internal well-being um, initiatives. And, uh, and I know that our team, we've got a social committee that is very inclusive and brings that team together, makes them feel comfortable. Those are small, but very, very huge things too. So 
And then as we work through, you know, the temporary, and, and I know we've talked a lot, people moving from temporary have a, you know, desire to want to go permanent residence. Then we start to become able to provide a little bit more robust of a program. And with all the insurance companies that we work out there, they all have a different way in which they go about it. So really that's our job on the consulting side is that we have these relations with these insurers out in the marketplace and we can identify what and where we can go first and how and when we can move to those next stages so that one point in time all those individuals are going to be able to take advantage of that same benefit offering across the board yes and i was just um it has me thinking too about you know coming from australia there are different countries that are all competing for talent on a global level uh, when it comes to some of the advantages of canada being destination it is truly destination number one at the moment, which is fantastic. Miranda, what do you hear from employers and what are some of the reasons why um, you see individuals wanting to come to Canada to work for Canadian businesses? It's an important question because when we think about um, the investment that you're putting into hiring this person, you are hoping that they stay. And what we do see is very high retention rates. We do see people want to um, want to come to Canada and want to stay in Canada. So that's really great to see. The reason for that being that Canada does have a very high quality of life. Um, it does have safety for people. It does have programs for them to access healthcare and um, education for their whole family. Um, lastly, it's a really attractive destination because we do have immigration programs that are accessible for people. So Canada is very open to bringing in people who have the skills that are needed um, and the work experience that are needed. So those are just some of the things that come together to make Canada kind of the ideal destination for people. That's really beneficial to clients because we find that they get a lot of applicants, they get a lot of high quality applicants, um, and it also can give you more confidence that that person who's arriving here um, has landed in a destination they're looking forward to and is going to have a very high rate of retention. Nice. And on that note, I want to say thank you, Miranda and Deb, for your insights and your tips and your tactics here. A huge amount of value that you've given everyone on the call. And for everyone on the call, thank you so much for joining us today. If there's if there's one piece of advice that I think wraps everything up is leverage experts, leverage experts um, who are experts in their fields to help you navigate this space so that you can do what's right and what's needed for your business today. So on the screen, you've got those two call to actions. Look out in your email for those additional resources that are coming through and let's have a conversation and see how we can help. I want to thank you all so much again for joining us and look forward to speaking to you all soon. Thanks, everyone. Thank you. Thank you, everyone.